The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. It is said, and truly said... That who plays with fire is sure to get burned. It is also said, and truly said, that as ye sow, so shall ye reap. Seems to me there's another one, too. Oh, yes, the mills of the gods grind slow, but grind exceeding fine. Those of us who, through living, learn the underlying truth in these proverbs, take care not to play with fire to sow carefully and to give as little grist as possible to those grinding mills. Not so Kay Wiley. Devil may care, fun-loving Kay Wiley. Our mystery drama, Death on Skis, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar, and stars Rosemary Murphy and Larry Haynes. I'll be back shortly with Act One. There are certain immutable laws in this world of ours, and one of them is that we, all of us, must sooner or later pay the piper. A simple law... Easy to understand, not too difficult to obey, really. And yet there are a good many who never seem to understand it, and rarely, if ever, obey it, until too late. Kay Wiley, wife of Dan Wiley, the novelist, was one of these. Gay, irresponsible, fun gal Kay, who let the piper play on and on, till the day he presented his bill... Well, what do you say, you two? Shall we ski back down to the inn? The murder scene getting on your nerves, Dan. (laughs) And you a mystery writer? (laughs) A writer who has to get his latest manuscript off to his publisher in New York by tomorrow. Now, look. I said I'd take the time to show you both the scene of the murder, and I have. I've gone out of my way to ski way the hell and gone up to the top of the mountain to this hut where the two murders took place. Now, the least you can do... The least you can do is stop acting like a husband and let me enjoy myself. Well, for Pete's sake, what's to enjoy? A lonely, isolated hut on top of a mountain. Where two women, not one, but two, and both of them blondes, like me, were slashed to death. One last year, one the year before last. Gives me goosebumps just being here. Delicious goosebumps. More thrill-making than even one of your novels, darling. Well, now that you've had your thrill... I'm going to finish it, Toddy, Dan. Do me a favor, Tony. Stop interfering between Kay and me. After all, she is my wife, you know, though you seem to forget that often enough. Meaning what, Dan? Now, you know what I mean. Well, I'm afraid I don't. You better explain that crack. Oh, come on now. Let's not spoil it. Dan, let's you and me get something straight. I've enjoyed being with Kay ever since I met you two last week. Now, like you say, it's a working vacation for you, and you've been holed up in your room with that typewriter of yours most of the time. While you and Kay have piled around together and had a few laughs together. And that's all. Not that there couldn't have been more... Kay's very attractive and just the kind that turns me on, but uh, we've just had one big laugh together, Dan, and that is all. You know it is, darling. Yes, yes, of course I do, Kay. I, uh, well, I, I... Keep it. Let's get back down to the inn. Woohoo! Hey, it's turned real cold all of a sudden. The sun's going down. It's going to take the south slope shorter. Uh-uh. We'll go down the way we came up. It's safer. Dan, I'm getting cold already. Oh, blast this book. Yes, will you let me be caught to it? Oh, sure, sure. Dan, the south slope, it isn't really dangerous. It's risky. It's too risky for you, darling. Even Hornbach warned you about it. Stuffy, old Norwegian. Hornbach isn't stuffy and he isn't old. Unless you call 42 old, he knows these mountains better than anyone, and he's one of the best pros around. So you listen to what he tells you. There you are. You're all set. Last one back at the inn. Why is the hot potty? Okay, I said not the south slope. Stop worrying, darling. I'll be okay. I might have known. If 
fellow not to do something, and you can bet on her doing it. <laughs> There's no harm in her, Dad. She just likes to do her own thing. Yes, and one day... One day what? She may do it once too often. Dan? Dan? Okay, please... I'm trying to finish this last chapter. Last two pages, in fact. We're nearly an hour late for dinner already. Well, you go on. Well, go ahead. No, not after this afternoon. What this afternoon? Tony will see me alone at our table, and he'll come over Well, what if he does? Oh, oh, I get it. Kay, I'm sorry. I know. I know there's nothing between you and Tony. You didn't sound that way up at the hut. Yes, I know, but... But what? Dan, we've been married nearly three years... I was 23, you were 38. I didn't think the difference in age mattered. You didn't either then. But now, is it beginning to? I don't know, dear. Somehow I seem to get older while you get younger. I'm not getting any younger. Well, you certainly don't act any older. You're as reckless and as irresponsible as, uh, as, uh, what's the word I want? Spoiled? Childish? Will that do? Yes, I guess so. Now, taking the south slope this afternoon, for instance, Kay, you could have been killed. But I wasn't. I was never more alive coming down that slope. To me, life is a dare, a risk. Unless you take the risks, you never really live. Hmm. There was something in that. But you can't go too far, Kay. You did this afternoon. You did a year ago when I came here to finish my last Minerva Twine mystery and left you in New York. So the horse didn't clear the jump. Well, you didn't have to take that high a jump. Now, you could have broken your neck instead of your collarbone. And, and what about the year before that? I came out here to finish another novel, and you... I know, and I'd never parachuted before, and it is a new sport, Dan. Yes, and when Sandy Dowling dared you to try it, you had to take the dare. Busted an ankle that time. <laughs> I guess from here on, you're saddled with bringing me along when you come here to finish a book. Well, why do you think I brought you this time? Oh, Dan, darling, am I more trouble than I'm worth? Well, <sighs> you're trouble, all right. But you're worth it. No, be serious now. You've been coming here the last two years alone. So you could be alone and finish a book without any interruptions. Have I ruined that for you? Because if I have... Don't be silly. It's been wonderful having you with me, Kay. And see, less than two pages to the end. I'll mail the finished manuscript off tomorrow, right on schedule. And then, sweetheart, the handsome Tony Shaw will have to find another playmate. Because I'll be your playmate from then on. Oh, Dan, I love you so. Well, just build that up into adoration. Then we'll start even. Now, come on, dinner. Indian Wells, Dan, all the way to Indian Wells just to mail a manuscript? What do you mean, just? To mail a manuscript. It's Dan Wiley's latest Minerva Twine mystery. Yes, but the round trip to Indian Wells, it takes at least half a day. Why not mail it from the end here? Well, that's too chancy, Tony. Indian Wells is a good-sized town with a good-sized post office. And they... Oh, Otto! Otto Hornbach! Come and join us for coffee. No, I thank you. Oh, come on. Sit down. I said no. Well, what's happened to our jovial ski pro? Something soured you, Otto? I know what soured him. You heard about me taking the south slope this afternoon, didn't you, Otto? After I warned you, you weren't ready for anything that steep yet? I suppose he put you up to it? Tony? Him and his practical joke. Oh, ye gods, Otto. That was two years ago. You still holding that against me? It wasn't funny, and I don't forget easy, Tony. Tony, what did you do to Otto? Oh, he was giving me a lesson. I fell. Well, I pretended I busted my leg. How do you acted as if I'd broken my spine? Accidents are no joke, not to me. I, I see too many. I do not like practical jokes. And, Mrs. Wiley, I do not like people to ignore my warnings. Otto, I'm sorry. Sorry is not enough. I warned you, but you went ahead anyway, and you could have killed yourself. Like Mrs. Horner killed herself last year, and Miss Yates the year before that. Killed themselves? They were killed, Otto. They were murdered. I say they killed themselves. I warned them. When you ski alone, I said to each of them, I said it, more than once I said it, when you ski alone by yourself, stay close to the end, do not go far off. So if you have an accident, no one will know till maybe too late. The hut is far at the top of a mountain. Yes, and if we have a sudden blizzard, almost impossible to reach. But they did not heed any warning. Like you, Mrs. Wiley. 
Ah, sometimes I think all you young women are the same. Heedless, reckless, spoiled, know-it-all. Hey, 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 I don't take it easy. You're, you're talking to my wife. Yeah, the way you should talk to her, maybe. Now, look, Otto. All right, all right, I'm sorry. I, I apologize, but I... Well, I get upset when people ignore my warnings. Excuse me now. Well, he's really ticked off at you, Kay. At me, too. Well, maybe I can't blame him. That practical joke of mine, I guess I went too far. Listen, you two, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll go and buy him a drink. Bury the hatchet. Yeah, sure, go ahead. I'll see you. Otto's right, you know, Kay. So do me a favor, will you? You have but to command me, Matt. No, seriously. I'll be gone all afternoon tomorrow, and I want you to stay close to the inn. Above all, don't go near that hut. The scene of the crime. Or should I say crimes? Why not? Just don't, that's all. Dan, you do sound serious. I am, very serious. But why? But Oh, I know. The murders. Those two gals hacked and slashed to death. They happened just about this time of year, didn't they? Yes. And you think another murder? It's possible. They never caught the murderer, you know. He's still on the loose. Okay, oh, listen, but... listen to me for once. I have a theory about these murders. I'm probably wrong, but if I just happen to be right, another murder could take place up there in that hut. And it could take place tomorrow. Tomorrow? What gives you that idea? Never mind. Just do as I ask you, will you? To stay close to the inn... And above all, stay away from that hut? <laughs> you sort of made me want to go up there now. What? Oh, yes, of course. Warn you not to do something, and you're almost compelled to do it, aren't you? Ah, uh -huh. maybe that's why you warned me. What? So I will go, and who will be waiting for me there with a big, sharp knife? But you... Kay. Well, didn't something like that happen in one of your mysteries? The one where the loving husband lured his wife into a trap and murdered her? <laughs> Okay, you're something else. There's only one place I've ever wanted to lure you. Where? Now, you know where. Now, come on, finish your coffee. And fast. <laughs> <laughs> Skiers getting caught up here on top of the mountain in a sudden blizzard. I'd say there's one coming from the look of those clouds out there and the force of the wind. Not to worry. If it starts snowing, we'll start right back down. On the south slope, no doubt. No doubt. How about opening the thermos and letting me have a hot toddy? I can use it. Oh, me too. Just being in this hut is enough to chill you. Because a couple of murders were done here? That scares you? Oh, I didn't say me. I said you. It doesn't scare me. Well, maybe it ought to. Here, I'll tell you. Why? Hmm? Why ought it to scare me? Well, you told me uh, Dan warned you not to come up here to the hut while he was away. Right? Right. Because he thought another murder, murder number three, could take place today? Right? Right. Well, could be Dan knows something we don't know. Could be another woman, another blonde, is going to be slashed to death today. <laughs> Me? You. Oh, what have I got to worry about? I'm with you. Precisely. What? I said precisely. You're here alone, far from the inn, in a hut that's been the scene of two murders, each at this time of the year. And you're here because it's a man you scarcely know... Me dared you to come. As I said earlier, the piper must always be paid. I can't help wondering if Kay's piper isn't asking for payment now. Payment in full. I'll return shortly for Act Two. finds herself in what well may be a murderous situation, which is to say, she may be murdered in a matter of minutes or less. Ignoring the warning of her husband, mystery novelist Dan Wiley, she has blithely gone off with Tony Shaw, a man she scarcely knows 
to an isolated mountain hut where two murders have already taken place. To judge from the look on Kay's face, Tony is speaking the truth when he says... Let me give you a refill on that toddy, Kay. You look as if you could use it. You're not the murderer. How do you know? Oh, come on now, Tony. No, 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 seriously. How do you know? <laughs> really, Tony. If you expect me to fall for one of your silly practical jokes... I'm not joking, Kay. This is for real. Uh, Tony... You're going too far. A joke is a joke, but pulling a knife on me... Pulling a knife? Me? Oh, no, no, no. Just showing it to you, Kay. You've seen it before. Always carry it with me. Comes in handy now and then. Like, uh, well, when I used it to repair that strap on your ski boot the other day. I remember, yes. So, uh, don't jump to conclusions about me pulling a knife on you. Oh, I could be, couldn't I? Tony, if you don't stop this nonsense... I could. Couldn't I? Yes. I, I guess you could. Except... Except what? You'd be crazy. Kill me and you'd never get away with it. No? Why not? Well, they know. Back at the inn, they know I came up here with you. They do? Well, anyhow, that we went skiing together. How do they know that? <laughs> it's coming back to you now, isn't it? You told me to go on ahead, that you'd meet me at the bottom of the trail. They don't know I'm up here with you. They, they don't even know we're together. Exactly. So now you see the spot you could have put yourself in. You could be dead right now. Murdered. Slashed to ribbons, the way the other two were. What? I, I don't understand. I'm no murderer, Kay. And why have you pretended? I haven't pretended anything. No practical joke either, if that's what you're thinking. All I've done is open your eyes to the spot you might have got yourself into through foolishness. Foolishness? All right, childishness. Indifference to what serious consequences could result from your anything for a thrill attitude. Now you sound like Dan. Oh? Well, you know, he's forever warning me that sooner or later I'll take one dare too many. And you could have this time. No, I didn't. You may yet. Look, Tony, enough is enough. Now, let me tell you who I really am. I'm not the practical joking ski bum I pretend to be. I'm a security officer. Security officer? I'm a kind of detective. In fact, I have my own agency back in San Francisco. I don't understand. Well, just listen to me and you will. Back two years ago, after the first murder took place, the inn management hired me to find the killer. You? Why you? What about the local police? Oh, the local cops are a laugh. Just a sheriff and his deputy. The Indian Wells police came up with nothing. So they called me in. The management of the inn, I mean. And I'm afraid I blew it last season. The second murder was done right under my nose. But not this season. No, no. This time I'm just a few steps ahead of the killer. And that's where you come in. And where exactly is that, Sherlock? You're the bait. Oh, no. Not little Kay Wiley. Oh, yes. You're marked for death no matter where you are. Sooner or later, the man who murdered those two blondes in this hut is going to murder you. You, you sound as if you know who he is. I'm pretty sure I do. Who? Your husband, Dan Wiley. Tony, you're crazy. I wish I were. Dan's in Indian Wells. Right now in Indian Wells, mailing a... No? No. I could be wrong. But if I'm right, he never went to Indian Wells. Dan. Dan Wiley. What are you doing out here on ski? I thought you had gone to Indian Wells. Uh, no. No, Otto, I... But uh... I saw you leave an hour ago. Drive off in your car. I changed my mind. I was going to mail a manuscript to my publisher, but... Halfway to Indian Wells, would you believe it, Otto? I suddenly thought of a different ending. And a better one. Ah, this means you have to sit and write a whole new end? Yes, I'm afraid so. Oh, me, I would never be a writer. They work too hard. Oh, you better believe it. 
See my wife, Otto? Uh, she went off skiing not long after you left. Oh, anybody with her? No, she went by herself. And I tell you this, I warned her again to stay off the south slope. Uh, well, you can save your breath, Otto. I know, I know. I'm telling you, lay down the law before it is too late. Show her who is boss, who wears the pants. Oh, it's nothing like that. Kay isn't bossy. She doesn't try to wear the pants or anything like that. She's just... Well, she's just young and exuberant. You can tell Kay not to do something and you bet she'll do it. Yeah. Obstinate. No, just... I don't know, more like, uh, more like a child. Do you, uh, know where she is right now? I told you I don't know. Oh. Well, I'd be willing to bet she's up at the hut, the murder hut. Well, why would you bet on that? Because I told her not to go there while I was away in Indian Wells. Ah, so you think she went? I'm practically sure she did. Uh, I will never understand women, never. No, me neither. Well, I'll see you, Otto. Uh, you going to meet your wife up at the hut? Uh-uh. No, I'm going to meet a typewriter in my room. So long, so long. No, no, wait, Dan! Ah, ah. Glad he didn't hear me this wind. It's funny, though. If he knew she would go to the hut when he told her to stay away from it? Huh. It's funny. Which is why he deliberately warned you to stay away from here. So I'd come here? What kind of sense does that make? Okay, you all right? Yes. <sighs> You've kind of knocked the breath out of me, Tony. I, I, I still can't believe... But you're right. Everything you've said is so true. In the few years we've been married, I... I never have got to know him, not really know him. He's married to that typewriter of his more than to me. And yes, he did come here last year and the year before without me. Said he had to be alone to finish a novel. But this time he brought you along. Why? Did you insist? No, I'd never think of interfering with his work. No, he, he asked me to come. And when I said maybe it would be better if I didn't, he insisted. Figures. But I, I just can't believe. If I'm right, if Dan is a murderer, he'll show up here in a few minutes. And I don't want to be here when he does. All right, then, let's go. But, uh... Tony, I just can't believe this of Dan, and I'm not going to. As I said, I, I haven't got to know him as well as I'd like, but good Lord, you can't be married to a man for nearly three years without knowing that he isn't a killer. And that's one thing Dan is not. I'd stake my life on it. That's exactly what you're going to do. What do you mean? I'm leaving, but you're staying here. Tony! He didn't go to Indian Wells. I'm positive he didn't. He knows you're here because he made a point of warning you not to come here. Now, look, you've got nothing to worry about. I won't be far, just up in that stand of cottonwoods. They won't see me, but I'll see him when he arrives. And then what? When he makes his move, I'll make mine. I'll be right outside that door when he makes it. What you're saying is when he attacks me with a knife. Exactly. Tony, I can't go through with this. You've I... got to if you want to help me catch him. I don't want to help you catch him. I, I, I mean... Oh, I don't know what I mean. He's my husband. I love him. I can't believe he's a murderer. Well, then you've got nothing to fear, have you? If I'm wrong and you're right, nothing will happen. Not a thing. But if it's the other way around... Well, then I think this time you'll get a thrill to end all thrills. I can't believe this is happening. Believe me, it is. Okay, I'm off. No, Tony, please, no. Come on now, Kay. I... I can't do this. I'm scared to death, Tony. If you don't believe Dan's the killer... I'd be a fool not to realize the things you've said are true. Tony, don't leave me, please. Please. Well, I guess I had you taped all wrong. What do you mean? Kay Wiley, who dare anything. Kay Wiley, who parachuted from a plane on a dare, jumped a horse over the highest hurdle. Oh, yes, I heard all about that. I saw you make the south slope on skis yesterday. Yes, I've taken some dares again and again because... Because... Yes, because what? Because I was afraid. Afraid? Petrified. Tony, I'm the worst coward in the world. The daring Kay Wiley is a mask, a front. I forced myself to take dares just so I, I could prove to myself that I'm not a coward. But underneath, I am. And, Tony, this is one day I can't take. I promise you, I'll be right outside waiting. If you don't take the dare, if you refuse to stay here and face him, you'll never know, will you? 
No. Whether he's a murderer or isn't. Oh, Dan. What is it? There's somebody coming up the trail. Dan? I can't tell. Snow blurs everything. But it's got to be him. Now, look, will you stay? I, uh, I... You've got no choice. You've got to find out. You've got to have the nerve to find out. All right, I'll see you. Tony! Oh, no. Dan. Hello, Kay. We can well imagine Kay's feelings as Dan Wiley enters the hut, proving Tony right. A curious situation. A woman facing the man she loves, her husband, not sure if he's a murderer. It certainly looks as if he is. And yet, well, we'll learn more when I return for Act Three. What would you do? How would you feel? Your husband, the man you love, stands before you and for all you know, has come to kill you. Indeed, cleverly lured you into a trap. Surely you'd be torn with uncertainty, caught between love and fear, and underneath these emotions would writhe despair. For if he is your killer, this man you love, you'd just as soon be dead anyway. I thought I'd find you here, Kay. I know. You know? I'm not totally naive, Dan. You knew when you warned me not to come that I would. Well, why the devil would I figure you would come when I begged you not to? Because I'm like the victim in your last novel, Death is a Blonde. You based that character on me, didn't you? I was the model for her. Okay. Okay, so what of it? Her husband knew she had a contradictory streak in her. I even remember the words you used to describe her. Contrary, as wayward as a child. And he used it to lure her to her death. Kay, things like that happen in novels, not real life. So you're not implying that I lured you here to kill you. Is that what you're saying? You said you were going to Indian Wells. What are you doing here? Well, to be honest about it, I had no intention of going to Indian Wells. I told you that, and I spread the story around the inn to throw the murderer off my track. Throw the... Yes. I have a feeling he knows I suspect him. But I also know he strikes when the moon turns full. What? Kay, I'm all but sure he's a homicidal maniac who has to kill. He can't help himself, you see, when the moon turns full this month of the year. You've got to be out of your mind. Maniacs who have to kill because of a full moon? That only happens in novels. Oh, no, no, no. In real life, Kay. You see, the full moon has a powerful effect on people, on the world, if it comes to that. Right now, it's only three in the afternoon. There isn't any moon at all. Kay, Kay, sweetheart, you can't see it, but it's there. And according to the lunar tables, it turned full about five minutes ago. That's why I didn't want you to come here this afternoon. Now, coming here, you set yourself up for the kill, played right into the murderer's hands. What if I hadn't ignored your warning, hadn't come here? Well, he'd have tried to lure you here. You were... Some other blonde at the inn? Blonde? Yes, both previous victims have been blondes. And I'm sure the third will be, too. You seem awfully sure. Yes, I am. I'm very sure. And the way you're looking at me. Okay, you do think I'm the killer, don't you? No, I... Yes, no, you I... do. You, I can see it in your eyes. You're afraid of me. Good Lord, Kay, how can you be? After nearly three years of marriage, three years of living with me, how can you be? And don't pull away. I don't know you. That's the trouble. I, I don't know you at all. What in places are you saying? Don't. Please, don't come near me. I, I am afraid of you. I don't want to be. It, it almost makes me ashamed because I love you and I want to trust you and should trust you, but... But you don't. <sighs> Why not? Have I ever given you reason to distrust me? Why did you come here alone last year and the year before? Well, you know why. I know what you told me. That it was always a habit of yours before we were married. A habit to go off by yourself to finish a novel. Well, it is. Then why did you bring me along this time? Because you begged me to let you come along and I finally gave in. What other reason would... 
Now, wait a minute. Now I begin to see why you think... Yes, of course, that's it. I was here last year when the second murder took place, and the year before that when the first blonde got it. It isn't that, not that alone. Then what? I just don't know you. All day long, for three years, all day long, you've been in your office. Working. And half the night. I can't stop when it's going good. I know that, but it's kept us apart, keeps us apart, and that's why I don't know you. And don't know what I've been told is true or not. Whether you didn't go to Indian Wells for the reason you said, or... or... Another... What is it? You said... I don't know if what I've been told is true or not. Told what? By whom? I... Did you ever come here with someone? Otto... Otto Hornbach. Yes, I talked to him half an hour ago. He said... He said you'd gone off on your own. Yes. Yes, I did. What, did you meet anyone on your way up here? Oh, I know. I... Hey, this is serious. Well, Stan, you're hurting me. Then answer me. Did you meet someone? Did you come here with someone else? Yes. Tony Shaw. Damn it, was it Tony? Yes. Where is he now? It, it, you've got a gun. I'd be a fool to go hunting a killer without one. Now, where is he? Right behind you. Don't move. There's a gun in your back. Drop yours now. All right, pick it up, Kay. Now, don't do it, Dan. Don't turn. All right, let me have it, Kay. Thank you. Now you can turn around, Dan. A knife. The end of the handle stuck in your back. You fell for one of the oldest tricks in the book, and you were a mystery story writer. Well, at least I was right about you. Right about me? Look, I'll make a deal with you, Tony. Let Kay go. Kill me instead. Tony? Tony's the murderer? Oh, he's trying to pull the wool over your eyes, sweetie. You're no ski bum, Tony. You've been acting a part, and you're a lousy actor. He's the security officer at the inn, he says. Yes, a security officer who carries a knife, huh? Now I'll tell one. Slashed to death, those women both slashed. Now don't get all psyched up. The knife's a tool, not a weapon. I've never needed a gun. Well, you seem to need one now. Precaution, that's all. I can handle you with both hands tied behind my back. You know black belt. Oh, really? Then suppose we just find out about oh, that. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. I'll break your arm. I drop it. I... Get it, Kay. I got it. All right. I'm sorry, Tony. I'll take the gun now, Kay. Kay. No. What? I... I don't know which of you to trust now. I'm sorry, Dan. So am I, honey. I don't blame you. Everything you said, you were right. Maybe you just... Should have said it sooner. You're always too busy. Yes, I guess I was, I guess. Hello! Hello, the heart! Otto! Otto Hornbach! Oh, thank God! Otto! What, what is this? Take this. Take it. What? A gun? Just holding it scares me. Take it. Take it. All right. All right. Come. Come inside. What? What is going on here? I... I don't know. I'm so confused. Tony. Me stop. Dan, what has happened? Well, to give it to you straight, Otto, I've got reason to think Tony Shaw is the man who murdered two women in this hut and was bent on murdering a third. Kay. Now, he's a liar, Otto. He's the killer, not me. Oh, how could that be? The one thing he pretended he was going to Indian Wells today was... Oh, I know. I know that. Like, I also know you are not a guest here. You are a detective. You know that? How? Why, look at the files in the office. I see you are on the payroll, and why? And as for you, Dan, last year and the year before, you mailed your manuscript from the inn, but this year, for no good reason, you have to go to Indian Wells. <laughs> that story you told me about another ending to your novel. Oh, I'm not a fool, Dan. I wasn't born yesterday. As for either one of you being the murderer, you can't be. I am. You? Me. And you, my next victim. Almost from the first day you came, my next victim. Why? Because you are like she was, my Helga. <laughs> oh, she put me through a hell on earth. She must have her way, not mine. Do always what she wanted, not what I wanted. She, she came first, me second. I didn't matter. Are okay isn't like they that. all are. Her kind, they're always... You know, they are always small and blonde, eh? helpless, dependent, in need of your strength. <laughs> At first, you're, you're taken in, poor little thing, so helpless. 
helpless, so dependent on you, so in need of your strength, your masculine strength, so you, you give it a little here, a little there, and gradually, so gradually, you don't know it is happening. You, you give her all your strength, and there's none left for you. You are caught. You are trapped in a web you thought was made of love, but is, is really made of, 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 of what? Of, of, of ego. That's what they call it, ego. The, the I, the I of I am this, and I want that, and nobody matters but me. Oh, I know. Leave him alone. Let him talk it out. You, you are Helga. Me? Oh, not just you. At the end, they are Helgas all the time. At least three or four each season. Spoiled, determined, pampered, coddled by fools. The husbands they are destroying as Helga destroyed me. Me. Or, or nearly did. I I woke up in time and, and destroyed her. <sighs> With a knife, Otto? It was handy in the kitchen and happened. And I I loved her. Even, even when I was killing her and driving the knife home again and again. I I loved her. Isn't isn't that strange? You see? So now now I I I must kill you, like Mrs. Horner last year and Miss Yates the year before that, kill you, you see, to save him. Otto, Otto, I don't need saving. Dan, you can't handle this. Neither can Tony. Only a woman can handle this, if it can be handled. You see, you hear what she says. Only a woman can handle it, oh spirit. Spoiled, spoiled, rotten. No, Otto, scared. <laughs> scared, rotten. The way Helga was, and Mrs. Horner, and Miss Yates. Scared? Mrs. Horner? Miss Yates? You? And Helga. Oh, no. No, that is not so. She had me trapped. Because she was afraid of what would happen if she didn't trap you. Otto, she trapped you because she loved you and was afraid. Afraid she might lose you. Lose me to... To who lose me? Another woman. Another? But, oh, there, there were no other women. There are always other women. Which of you first? No, I'm wait. sorry, but you must die before I kill her. Not witnesses. I cannot have witnesses. For God's sake, Otto, didn't you hear what Kay said? She just told you a simple truth, a simple womanly truth. A woman traps a man because she loves him. And she's scared to death of losing now him. She lies. Like all women, she lies. All right, which which one first? Huh? Tony? Dan? Me. Hey, what in place is he I'm do? between you now. Between him and you. He'll have to shoot me first. When he does, jump him. And I thought you said you had no nerve. Get out of the way. Hey, please. Jump him when he fires. Well, go on, Otto. Shoot. Get out of the way. You, you, I must kill with the knife. Sorry, change of plan. A gun this time, Otto. A gun or nothing. Give it to me. Or shoot. Another step. One more and I kill you. You're going to kill me anyhow, so what have I got to lose? Give me that gun. No, wait, wait. What? Okay. Okay, it works both ways. Now get out of his way. Let him shoot us first. That'll give you a second or two to get out that door. And leave you here, dead? Do you think I'd want to go on living? Out of the gun. You... You... You mean it? You mean what you say? Of course I mean it. Why else would I... But I... I don't understand. You... You would give your life to... To save his? No... Oh, no. This is not possible. Women are... Oh, no, they are selfish. They come first. Always they come first. All of them. Not all, Otto. Not every woman is like... Your Helga must have been. I... I was wrong about Miss... Miss Yates? Mrs. Horner? I don't know about them, but you're certainly wrong about me. Wrong? Wrong? Oh, no! Oh, my God. Kay. Kay? I, I'm all right. Better see to him. Oh, crazy, crazy. He shot himself. 
Anderson. No, no, he's breathing. Now we better get him down to the end fast. I'll give you a hand. Okay, okay, sweetheart. You saved our lives. Believe me, from here on, you can take all the dares you want, and I won't say a word. You won't have to, Dan. There aren't going to be any more. I just took my last. Luckily, though, Kay Wiley paid the piper, as must we all. The price was not exorbitant. Her life. You ask me, she got off easily. How about you? You building up a debt you'll have to settle one day with your piper? Better do a little thinking about that. Better do a little thinking myself. I'll be back shortly. Otto Hornback, you'll want to know, lives comfortably today in a rest home. Tony Shaw is back in San Francisco. As for Dan and Kay Wiley, well, Kay doesn't take any dares anymore. She's much too busy bringing up the twins. Dan continues to be a very successful writer of mysteries. Incidentally, you needn't bother to buy his latest Minerva Twine mystery. You just heard it dramatized. cast included Rosemary Harris, Larry Haynes, Ralph Bell, and Norman Rose. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs>